That does not bode well for us because we are headed in that direction. Yeah, so I don't think I can see it really steep. It's adventure time. We're still in the city, so we're still wearing masks. But soon we'll be out in the mountains and we will be free. Kind of scale. Is it calibrated? I mean, what kind of a terrible scale is this? Who's gonna hold 300 pounds? <laughs> so that's supposedly 35 pounds. Okay. I weighed this at home, it was 31.7 pounds. Today is Tuesday, July 21st, 2020, and we're here in Kings Canyon National Park at Rhodes End. Now Carl is somewhere. I don't know where. I think I've lost him already. So this has the makings of a great adventure. I found Carl. Also, read the sign. Dang. Looks like this guy was trying to ski the Sierra High Route. This is gonna be the 195 mile trek of the Sierra High Route. We plan to do it in 14 days with a resupply halfway. We're partially concerned that we'll get too hungry. There's always a chance of, you know, rolling your ankle and risking injury. Um, or like a bear might kidnap Carl. So we'll see. So the plan today is to hike up the trail up 5,000 vertical feet past Grass Lake Pass. And then we'll go over another pass and plan to camp at Glacier Lakes. Okay, so why am I doing this hike? Well, three years ago, my brother and I did the John Muir Trail. In 2019, I got to go back on the trail early season and do a section hike of it. And the JMT is just such a wonderful trail. But at some point, I feel like you are looking for more challenging things. While I could try to do the JMT a little bit faster, uh, I think these high routes are just so much more exciting. You just feel more liberated. I think this is a trip that's definitely a lot less of a stroll in the woods, despite what it may look like. Because when my brother and I did the John Muir Trail, we averaged 20 miles a day. There's only 40,000 feet total of elevation gain. On this trip, while the mileage is similar, it's about 200 miles, we're gonna do 60,000 feet of elevation gain. Not all of it is on trail either, which actually makes it much harder because going down Alice is energy sapping. So we've come up 4,600 feet already. It's noon. We've got an exciting development. We are here. It's time to begin cross country. We're gonna go off trail. It's starting. I'm tired. All right, we're at the saddle. We're about to get our first glimpse of Grouse Lake. 
Yeah, I've been wanting to do this trip for like 10 years, so I'm really excited. But looking up at our first like off-trail pass, starting to feel the weight of it all. It's an easy day when you take a 50 minute lunch break and you still don't feel rushed to get to camp. A nice and easy way to the pass over there. All right, first pass. Nice. Woo. 30 something more to go. Right through that gap there. Let's go, Chris Saddle. Look, little tadpoles. All right, we made it to Go Crest Saddle. High five. Bam. Here we are. There's a nice tarn right on top of the saddle. Slabs are so nice. We're so lucky. Yeah, it's really fast. At some point, it will be Talus. There are a ton of mosquitoes and they're all on Carl right now. Carl, why are we going uphill? I thought we were done. We are on the State Lakes Trail and we are probably going to call it here. We feel like it's not too smart to push too hard on this first day. Day one, complete. We're still alive. We need to pack some new shoulders for tomorrow. Yeah, I'll probably swap these shoulders out for some new ones. Look what Carl's having tonight. Chili. Yeah. With brown rice. Yeah. I'm doing my usual. I'm doing stretches and uh, safe from all these mosquitoes. What a great day. I think avoiding these mosquitoes is really just the icing on the cake. We're gonna plan to get started at 6.30 tomorrow morning. So I'll see you then. Good morning. It's day two, 5.30 in the morning. How'd you sleep? Pretty good, off and on, but. Oh, it dropped down to 40 degrees last night. Navigation is easy. Navigating in the forest is hard. I think that we are we're right here now. Yeah. Hey Carl, is when do you rate your pass? Yeah, I think it counts. Sweet. Does Great Pass count? Yeah. Let's go down to it. <laughs> Alright. We're going down to Great Pass, which is 200 feet down there, which is so bizarre to go down to a pass. Carl, long distance high five. Bam. This one was really not worth high five because we didn't really do anything. Crystal clear. And here we are. We're about to go up and over White Pass. All right, guys, it's exactly noon and we just made it up White Pass. Yes. Nice. We're gonna take a lunch break here, traverse to Red Pass, and then a fun descent. We are in the land of rocks. This is the kind of CR high route I was waiting for. Well, we're here on Red Pass. Nice. Next we have to go over uh, Frozen Lake Pass, which is it's up there. That is deep, stunning. Deep blue. Hey Carl, how come we're not camping at Marion Lake tonight? Well, that was Plan A this morning. 
Then we got into this whole, like, maybe we'll go over uh, Frozen Lake Pass. And basically, we haven't decided. Basically, we're going to get there too soon. Show up for that. You all right? Well, I fell on my ass for the first time. Don't worry, I didn't get it on video. We have to appear cool. Watch this. I'll give you guys Very a nice view. Some things, look at that. It's just so blue. Holy um, crap. What this, is this, place? this is like food coloring in water. It's just wild. Do you think it's like this all the time or just like we're so lucky right now? Because this is amazing. It's so blue. Oh, I see the plaque. All right, I know this is getting old, but gosh, it is so blue. I am so amazed. This is one of the coolest lakes I've definitely seen. This is to commemorate Helen Marion Lacant. So how many bugs are flying around me? Normally at this time, I would expect to look down on my shoulders and see like five of them. <sighs> oh, there's just one. Maybe the permethrin's doing something. We came down Red Pass from over there. That is Frozen Lake Pass. We will do that first thing in the morning. Couscous pilaf with a little salmon steak. Oh, that looks delicious. It's 7.30 p.m. I'm washed up, I've eaten dinner. It was windy outside and pretty cold. And uh, I'm gonna go to bed and try and get maybe 10 hours of sleep. So I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. It's day three. We are gonna do Frozen Lake Pass first thing in the morning. But first I gotta do this. All right, we are embarking on one of the hardest passes of the Sierra High Route, which is the Frozen Lake Pass. Frozen Lake Pass is a great warm up in the morning. We're almost to the top, and it's 7.26, so just under an hour. We're here on Frozen Lake Pass. Nice. Woo! Good morning workout. Then we got to get down. Yeah, it's just a little bit that's like steep at the beginning. So this descent's really not that bad. I've done uh, worse on the YHR. Here I am with one pole. Even with one pole, I'm willing to go down this with a camera in my hand. And that just goes to show that either I'm really stupid or that it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Jimmy says as he plummets to his death. Let me show you a look up where we came from. It always looks bad, but honestly, this is still better than going down Forrester Pass in the YHR. And maybe it's just because I'm not alone. Gosh, I love these giant boulders. The giant's house is so easy to walk on. So when you look at it from afar, we came down Frozen Lake Pass, which is that one. It looks so sketch. And yet, it went. Carl and I have been joking about how easy the JMT is gonna be, but I'm actually really stoked to see it again and to be on it. Three years, come a long way, I think, where the JMT is now a bailout option for the Sierra High Route. There's a moment on that rock. Did he die? Is he a warning to all the other marmots? I mean, there's a sunbathing spot.
It's a low snow year. It's a very different view in 2017 when I came here in August. There he is. What a lucky guy. Gets a gorgeous view like this. All right, it's 10.40 in the morning. We're four hours in. We are at the top of Mather Pass. Nice job, Carl. I don't know what number this is, I forget. This is pass number two for today. I don't know about you, Carl, but I really enjoyed this stroll. Uh, lovely trail. It was so nice. So lovely. A nice little break from Talus. We've been descending forever. It's quite, oh wow, it's quite nice. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it on a trail. Carl just completed a major ford. Woo! Just kidding, we are uh, taking a break off the JMT. Gonna have lunch and then we'll be going off that way. Looks like I dropped a screw. Offers an excellent view south toward the jagged unnamed peaks west of Mather Pass. <laughs> this is the elegant way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is fantastic. You don't get quite a view like this from the JMT, unfortunately. So here we are in the basin looking up at Cirque Pass. It looks great, very slabby. It's 345, we're on top of Cirque Pass. Nice. That was a big one. It was a bit of everything. We chose to do some class three, but you don't have to. And uh, some slabs at the end there. We might get rained on. It's time to move. Storm's coming in. We're gonna make camp down at this lake here. We're not gonna do potluck pass as originally planned. A beautiful place to have dinner. This is a two and a half pound foam roller that we brought. It's like 8.15 right now. Had a very big dinner. Took our time because we got here at like four o'clock. And uh, today was a really good day, super fun. We just like lounged around, napped during the daytime, meandered. But meanwhile, I'm gonna get some sleep. So I'll catch you in the morning. Good morning, friends. It's day four and it's about 5.30 in the morning. As you can see, this is our routine now. this thing. We encounter two other hikers that were in this basin, but they're not doing the SHR. It's 7.23. We're here on top of Potluck Pass. Woo! This was great. Here's a shot of North Palisade for you guys. That looks sweet. Oh, does he not know how to fly? Uh-oh, he doesn't know how to fly. But he knows how to Rock hop like a champion. I like long walks on the beach in the mountains. All right, check it out. This is Knapsack Pass. We've been moving for three hours. Bam. Woo. We're seeing it for the first time. Wow. Gotta love slabs. They're so great. This is Carl trying to get signal. We got a wee bit of talus here. And so at 11:12 a.m., our day comes to an end. <laughs> we are on the trail. Look at that grand view behind me. Our off-trail views were pretty spectacular, but this is a pretty dang good view. Oh, so stoked! Nice. Okay, so we're on the trail, but then uh, we see slabs. So should we follow the trail or should we do the slabs? We found a huge juniper. Yeah. Class two. Time for some class two action. Blah. Bam. Here we are in the Clunk Canyon. Wow, it's more gorgeous than I remember. This is our lunch spot and I'm gonna go over into the creek and rinse myself off. Oh yeah, so clean. 
What a nice little meadow. 321, it is starting to rain. So there's lightning and thunder. So we're gonna hang out here for a second and let it pass by. So it just started hailing, just as we were about to hit the trail. You know, naturally when the weather goes south, people band together in the wilderness. We waited for a little bit and uh, as you can see it's a little bit brighter up here and a little bit darker back there. Should be safe to go but we can always keep assessing. We are so lucky. We got rain while we're on the trail. Knock on wood. Uh, uh, hopefully we don't get any while we're off trail. Fuzzy antlers. They're just grazing. So it's 5.15. We are in this sheltered enclave campsite. We're gonna hang out here, cook some dinner, and wait until the clouds blow over and it clears up. All right, check it out. We're here at Helen Lake and Mir Pass is blue. There we go. There's Mir Pass. And, well, you can't see all the trail that we came up to get here, but it's very circuitous, as Roper would say. 7, 10 p.m. We are here on Mir Pass. This one was hard earned though. We had to wait out the storms. Yeah, well, we played it smart. So there were people that were stuck in this lightning hut. We saw them on the way down. And uh, yeah, that was not a good situation. For Mir Pass, this is the highest point along the Sierra High Route where you will not see a single tree. Or shrub. It's time to scout for a campsite. But look at this glow, And look at Evolution Basin down there. We found some established campsites next to the JMT. It's been a long day, but look at that view. Good morning. It is day five, Saturday, July 25th. Today we're looking forward to doing some off-trail passes. It'll be exciting. That was a mouse. There wasn't even anything here to eat. Okay, it is 6.40. We've left camp. We're headed back onto the JMT. And the big pass for today is Snow Tongue Pass. This is where we're gonna go off trail. It's always the forested parts that are actually the hardest. Ah, oh, gotta love the steep forest. That was probably person number one, person number two, and person number three. Come on, bear your poop, guys. Yeah, bear, come on. Bear me your poop. This is why I use a compass, folks, because once you get to a certain point, like we're at the very southern tip of this lake, and uh, it becomes insanely easy to realize Snow Tongue Pass is that one and not that one. It's the uphill. Man, it's so cold right now. Just kidding. It's a freaking oven. Carl and I were talking earlier about how the both of us, when we're tired and things are hard, we like to crack jokes and smile. Woo! We did it! Oh my god. Nice. Oh yeah. Top of Snow Tongue Pass. Came from over there. And we're about to go down this thing which hopefully looks sketchy on camera because it does look sketchy in person too <laughs> so here we are snow tongue pass and we're gonna go down that way 
All right, so it's gonna, gonna go down all this loose stuff to there. The idea is to not pull on any rocks that are loose and to just kind of slide like we did on Frozen Lake Pass. You can't even see Carl, but this should give you an idea of, this is me holding it flat. So this should give you an idea of the steepness. Uh, it's similar to Frozen Lake Pass on this stuff, but I think even a little steeper. So I have a couple choices. I can go down this. Um, it's nice to see I'm like shooting for these big rocks, that one, that one. But then over there, I'm basically just kind of in a slide all the way down. Or I could go this way through some of the boulders that are actually more anchored. So I think I'll go this way. Also, Carl's coming down the middle. And so I told him I would be out of the fall line because you don't want to kick rocks down on your partner. So I'll go this way. Because it's only 300 feet, it's just spicy enough to enjoy. Woo, oh, there. There it goes. We did it. And that is enough. There's no time like the present. So I saw this one uh, rock that was loose and I decided to try and balance on it. And then I went in the water. So now I'm talus hopping. Water talus hopping. All right, quick break to take care of our feet. Carl has some sort of blister on the back of his heel. I don't really have problems except for the fact that um, it's wet. And luckily the rubber is sticky because I went through all that talus with wet shoes. Also, there's clouds over Snow Tongue Pass right now. Well, there used to be sun here. That does not bode well for us because we are heading in that direction. So we might have to sit this one out and wait until it blows over again. What a beautiful view. Minus the storm clouds. But look, sunny. So much sun on this side. It could get to the point where we wait it out. If we wait it out, it'll get rain on the descent and that might be sketch. Alternatively, we may have a window to go over. All right, we are going full speed. The one benefit of all this is that it has really motivated us. We think we can probably make it up in 20, 25 minutes. And then more importantly, we can book it down before it starts to rain. All right, we did that in like 10 minutes or something. We're on Puppet Pass. Great job. We made it up here. Maximum effort because while well, clouds are brewing, we're not gonna spend too much time, we're gonna get down. See all those dead trees? That's us bushwhacking. We knocked them all down. But now we're here at Pine Creek. All right, we've set down our packs probably for the last time today. The car looks so comfy. Okay, it's 8.30. We are going to bed because we're gonna get up at 4.30 tomorrow morning. And the reason for that is because there are afternoon thunderstorms that have been happening recently and we don't wanna be stuck on a pass with lightning. So we're trying to shift our schedule ahead to accommodate. Good morning, it is 4.30, day six. I'm using the headlamp for the first time on the trip. It's clearly blinding me right now, so I'm gonna turn it off and get packed up. It's almost 6 a.m. and it is beautiful out. We are hiking on the uh, Pine Creek Trail and then we'll be making a turn off soon and going off trail. There's a person at Merriam Lake. We have to be very careful not to scare the wildlife. All right, so we are going up Feather Pass right there. 
Ooh, look at that. All right, now smash it. We're almost at Feather Pass, and look behind us. Oh, isn't that amazing? Feather Pass, 12,300 feet. Woo! Nice. This was a very gorgeous climb, and the descent doesn't look terrible. Tell us what you think about the pass, Jimmy. Oh, I think it's fantastic. There's so much talus. Yeah, here's what I think. You know, it really rocked. I like these gentle slopes. I don't want to take them for granted. Here's the route we're going to take. We're going to go there, go to Bear Paw Lake, start traveling up, go around, and then we're in there and we shoot up. I'll do in the snow. Check this out. This is Black Bear Lake. Is this not like the most magnificent place to camp you've ever seen? Sparkling blue water, sandy campsites, rocks to jump off of, and a little kiddies pool. Oh, dude. Look at Feather Peak. And that's Feather Pass right there in the middle. The snow, we came down that. All right, here we are at the pass. Technically, the pass is down there, but we're above the pass, so that's even better, right, Carl? <laughs> Except that there's a cliff and we need to be over there. Cliff time. All right, we are officially on White Bear Pass. Whew. Whew. Look at this view. This is the north side of White Bear Pass, and as you can see, it's going to be a long descent. So coming down White Bear Pass, the reason Roper recommends sticking on the north side is because you get these class four slabs. So we are on this side, much more gentle. There's a decent amount of talus on the descent from White Bear Pass. Some might call it endless. Here we are at Lake Italy. There we have Gabbett Pass. And a closer view of Mount Abbott and Mount Dade. It is 1.53 p.m. and we're on Gabbett Pass. Woo! Look at the silty ice melt. Oh my God, this is so lovely. So uh, basically it just got cloudy. So now we're not too hot. We dipped our hats in the water and then it kind of flattened out instead of being talus. There's no more talus until down there. Yeah, and now like life is so great. Things stopped hurting too. Like we feel so bad, this is so spongy. But look, it comes back. It does. It bounces back. It's 424. Feels like we've been going forever. But we gotta slog on downhill through all this really thick brush and trees. With no good way down. Yeah, this part really sucks. From like Lower Mills Lake down into the second recess is just awful. Okay, we finally got out of that mess and that's gotta be my low light for this trip. We are on the Mill Creek Trail in the second recess. This is not a maintained trail, but boy, is it nice to be in the woods where you can actually see through the trees. Oh, it's yeah, we could have rock top, but I was gonna put my feet in anyway. Yeah. It don't matter. It's six o'clock right now, which means we've been moving for 12 hours today because we got up and moved at 5.30 a.m. and have taken less than 30 minutes of breaks cumulatively today. My name's Luke. This is Duncan. We're walking north cool. on the high road. These are the only guys that we bumped into that are doing the Sierra High Route northbound as well. Look at the campsite that we found. I said that I would not have a fire unless somebody literally stacked wood right next to the fire pit. And uh, that's what happened. So I think we might have some fire tonight. All right, we're glamping now. Good morning. It is 6 a.m. on day seven. We're gonna hike 10 miles out of Mana Pass Trail and then resupply. We're headed out to Rock Creek Campground 
to resupply because Carl's mom happens to be camping there. All right, since we're on the trail and it's just easy cruising, we are playing the pass game. Name the passes that we passed. And we counted 17. So in rapid succession, we did Cross Lake Pass, Goat Crest Saddle, Windy Ridge, Gray Pass, White Pass, Red Pass, Frozen Lake Pass, Mather Pass, Cirque Pass, Potluck Pass, Knapsack Pass, Mirror Pass, Snow Tongue Pass, Puppet Pass, Feather Pass, White Bear Pass, and Gabbit Pass. It's 11 a.m. and this is Mono Pass, our resupply pass. Yeah. Same pass tomorrow? Same pass tomorrow. Look at that hop. Wow. So apparently there was a fire here in Little Lakes Valley like three days ago and everyone got evacuated. We're meeting up with Carl's mom right now, hopefully. We don't actually know where she is. And she was supposed to be camping here for the week. She probably got evacuated. So we're here at Mosquito Flat. Carl's mom has not been able to make it in yet. We're kind of puzzled. We're just gonna hang out here and play in the water for a little bit and hope that we can uh, meet up with her soon. Let's take a look at how the shoe is faring. These are the Merrill MQM Flex 2. MQM stands for Move Quickly in the Mountains. So far, they've seen half the high route. Bolted up well, surprisingly well. Here we are with our resupply. Good morning. We are resupplying here in the Rock Creek Campground. Look at this. Today is day eight. <laughs> and thanks to the lovely hosts for having us with our resupply. We are now back at the trailhead and about to get back on the high route. It took us an hour and a half to get up to Mono Pass. So here we are, nice. Woo! Mono Pass again. Duo pass now. Duo pass. <laughs> it's a very sandy trail. Let's see how much sand I have in here. Oh yeah. Hey Carl, check this out. So Carl and I just realized that we're doing about 40 miles just because of the way that logistics are working out. And those 40 miles are on top of the high route. All right, so it's three and a half miles to Laurel Lake. We're finally back on the Sierra high route. This is Laurel Lake. We'll be camping here tonight. Good morning. It's day seven on the Sierra High Route, day nine of the overall adventure. It got pretty dewy. There was a high humidity here near the lake. Our first task this morning is to climb up Bighorn Pass. So we are here at Bighorn Pass. Nice work. Took us about 50 minutes to get here. And we're gonna try and contour around and then go over Shadow Relief Pass, which is over there. Yippee! Woo! It's two hours since we left camp at Laurel Lake, and we're here on Shadow Relief Pass. So, if we can cross over to there, then it clears up a little bit. We are done with all that bushwhacking and we're on the Horse Heaven Trail going down to Tule Hole and then we'll pick up the JMT and head over to Virginia Lake. It's a hot and sweaty climb up to Purple Lake, but it's gorgeous. Check it out. We're here at Virginia Lake. Virginia Lake is such a beautiful lake. Michael and I did not get a stop here last time when we hiked the JMT because we were hoofing it. But uh, today, I think we're gonna stop here and do a reset dry and have lunch and enjoy. Well, after taking like a one and a half hour lunch, we're back on the JMT. Trail dogs. Here at Duck Lake Pass. My phone is gonna freak out. I already got a bunch of messages. <laughs> the night is.
Good morning, it is day eight on the Sierra High Routes. Oh no. Okay, so now we are officially lost in the woods. So I think our strategy here is we are going to wander into the woods until we hit one of two trails. We're trying to figure out the worst way to get into Red's Meadow. All right, our scouting of the Sierra Low Route is complete. We've determined that the trail is the best course of action. Even cherry pie is delicious. All right, it's 1.10 p.m. We're gonna have to go out into the sun. Um, Carl, we got a long ways to go to Canada. Yeah, believe me, I've done it. <laughs> okay, we're doing some bonus. We're going to the top of Devil's Post Pile because I've never been. It is 2.40 p.m. in the afternoon. And it is officially slog time. Oh my god, we finally hit this junction. It took us forever. Here's a shot of Superior Lake. Uh, hint, it is not superior in any way. I think the best thing about this lake is the fact that it leads us to Nancy Pass. No offense, Lake. Carl has deemed this the worst place in the Sierra High Route. It is official now. Look at all these freaking bugs. There's bugs, the water's warm, the trail to get here sucks. On a positive note, we're gonna go up over the pass and then everything will be better. It's almost 6 p.m. and we've made it to Nancy Pass. Ooh, look at Mount Ritter and Banner Peak right there. So close. Wow, even the rocks love us here. Good morning. It is day nine on the SHR and day 11 of our trip. We've got the alarm clock blaring in the background there. That's just a bird. And uh, today we're gonna be playing around in the Ritter Range. It's gonna be super fun. We are in the early morning sun. There's no breeze, it's nice and toasty. Here we are at Cecile Lake. And look at this view of Mount Ritter and Banner Peak. So cool. Look, we got all this talus. But talus is easy and fun. Okay, so Carl almost died over by the creek. He um, stepped on something slippery, and then his other foot caught something slippery, and uh, then he had to run towards a cliff to save himself. How'd you feel about that? Just another day on the Sierra High Route. So we're gonna cut up through there. There's a tarn up there, and then we're gonna go over White Bark Pass. Hot takes with Jimmy. Jimmy, what's been your favorite pass so far? I think Snow Tongue was super fun. And 
then we ended up in like this gorgeous meadow. Nice. What's your favorite campsite? I think yesterday's was great. I slept well. Yeah, Minaret Lake. Yeah, that was Lake. it. Was lovely. What's uh, your favorite piece of gear that you have with you? I'm taking these shoes from Merrill. What a cool day. Last year, my friend Sam and I, we were on the John Muir Trail. It was all covered in snow. Most people took the PCT, which is uh, on the ridge up there. And then we decided to cut up a gully next to Garnett Lake. All right, we're here on White Bark Pass. Nice. More talus. All right. We're gonna go down the talus over to Thousand Island Lake. Whether or not 1,000 islands actually exist proves immaterial, for the name eloquently conveys the idea. What do you think? Probably one of the most beautiful parts of the whole thing. So many flowers, water, mountains, got everything. That's Glacier Lake Pass and we're gonna go over there. Oh, this is a beautiful lake. So beautiful. All right, so this section behind me is about to get pretty tricky. There's a bunch of class three ledges and it's a complex system. So hopefully we can find the right route. I think we'll be fine. We've been doing pretty good so far. We just took the first one down. That was the only class three thing. And now we're just uh, walking down. Apparently a lot easier than we thought. It's a teeter-totter. We have here the first of the two twin island lakes. Each lake has an island, it's so cool. Our first real ford, except for Mono Creek. Yeah, it went up to like about the thigh. This is what I've got for dinner. Mashed potatoes with salmon. And this is free salmon that I got at Red's Meadow. And we're sitting lakeside. It's hard to beat this view. Good morning. It is day 10 of the SHR. I didn't even set my alarm clock, but it's 5.15 right now and it's time to get up. We found ourselves at the lake we were shooting for. And now we're gonna go over there behind that black ridge and then descend into Bench Canyon. When you're off trail, your off trail name is the food that you desire most. And Carl is pie, and I'm beer. I think we feel kind of bad. There were three guys that were following us. We decided to come down something that was fairly steep because we're comfortable with it and thought it'd be pretty fast and direct. Yeah, it looks like they might have gone around. Oops. So we think we're pretty good at route finding, but sometimes it's more about going down the route you find than finding a good route. Yeah. See, easily should go down on the right side of the canyon there. Instead, we decided to traverse across past the willow choke thing to the ledges over here, which was quite direct and fast for us, but... Probably not great for anyone else. Yeah, we were worried the group was going to follow us.
Good catch. <laughs> you just snatched it like Smeagol. That is Forester Peak. We're gonna do Blue Lake Pass, which is right there. It is 11.09. We took our time and we're here on Blue Lake Pass. Woo! Yosemite National Park, that way. And a uh, nice view of Forster Peak right there. As some would say, this is all right. It's always interesting how you get these little micro pains. First, your knee hurts, then your hamstring hurts, then your feet hurt, then your ankle hurts, and then the cycle just repeats. <laughs> so we came down from probably that right there. I'm fairly sure we're doing the Sierra High Route. Why are we so low here? Why are we going through a forest? I'm kind of hoping something exciting and spicy is going to happen. Like maybe Carl will get mauled by a bear. After miles and miles of forest, we have a view. We came from 9,900 feet up to Volkosang Pass in 26 minutes. We hoofed it, nice. Today finally felt like a day on the high route where I had to go pretty deep. It's because of the trail. My feet are not having it. But we made it here. Check it out. We just watched the moon rise. Oh. And there's Jupiter right behind the moon. Good morning. Today is Sunday, August 2nd day 11 on the SHR and it's hard to get out of bed this morning. Look at that. We're looking at Half Dome. So Yosemite Valley is that way. We're here at Tuolumne Pass. Yeah. High five. It's a pass if you come from the valley. And uh, basically once we get to Tuolumne Meadows, then we're gonna go up towards Gaylor Lakes then go up and over Mineshaft Pass, and then the east ridge of Mount Conus, and then uh, we'll be finding camping in one of the lakes north of that. You know, it's interesting how my perspective on time changes. When I'm off trail, time actually goes by pretty quickly because I'm totally engaged and trying to figure out where to go next. And when I'm on trail, all I have to do is look down and just keep walking. Yeah, this is a pretty good section of the Sierra low route. We're meandering through the forest next to some cars. All right, we're about to do our road crossing. Wait, Carl, watch it. Watch your foot. Watch your foot. Okay, go, go for There's it. There's a car coming now. Go for it, go for it. No. Run. No. Oh my God, you're <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. We are coming out of the forest and into a big open meadow. This is so cool. Twelve twenty, just in time for lunch. We are here on top of Mineshaft Pass. Nice the actual work. Mineshaft. Woo! This next section is going to be fun. There's a grass in the rock, right there. Can you see it? We made it to Spuller Lake. We got one more lake up there and then it's the East Bridge. And then it gets cliffy. Uh, oh, it's snowy. And then it's 
mobile tail shoot. We are on the east ridge of Mount Connus. Nice work. We are gonna try and figure out how to get down right now. Beautiful view. And then Sky Pilot Coal is right up ahead. We're going down this. We're gonna scramble up there, go down and follow, and then hop over to the lake. All right, so it's like 8.30 and it's been a long two weeks, so I'm going to go to bed. And it's gonna be a windy night probably because the entire tent is shaking. Uh, but I've got my rain jacket on just to keep the drafts out. I will catch you guys in the morning. Good night. Well, good morning. Today is day 12 of the SHR. I've just been having this crazy dream tonight. Just really bizarre. But now it's time to get up and get ready to hike over Sky Pilot Call. Sky pilot call. Woo! Nice. And we have two more passes to go. There's a fox running across the snow right there. Wow. Carl and I both feel like this is similarly difficult as Frozen Lake Pass. I went down this uh, pretty steep dirt shoot because uh, the rocks were pretty unstable <laughs> and uh, then we're gonna, we're gonna be on ice for a little bit it's like all the passes we've done before have been training for this so sky pilot call is a doozy so what'd you do today oh not much just Walked across a glacier with no glacier protection tools. Pretty wild if you look back at it. We've gone down like 200 feet. <laughs> well, we wanted more talus and here we have more talus. But this is the really crappy kind of talus where it's all messy and all different sorts of sizes and loose. This is the kind of talus that you don't bring home to see your mom. You didn't film any of that? I filmed no talus. Oh. I'm just gonna think we had an easy walk the whole time in your video. We did have an easy walk the whole time. Out here amongst all the talus, we find this rock feature. I did not make that. Who made that? Was it you, Carl? Uh, how could it be me? I'm right here. Who did that? It must have been the pioneers. So here we have a great view of our route. We're gonna go through the forest. And then next to Gray Butte, you have Virginia Peak over there. You have Stanton Peak over there. And then Stanton Pass going over to the other side. There's Sky Pilot Coal. This is our last lake of the Sierra High Route. And so to commemorate 
we're gonna jump in the water. One, two, three. Oh yeah. Oh. How far are you going? We're here at Stint Pass. Uh, last serious pass. Our last pass is over there. Horse Creek Pass. This is it. This is well we gotta get down. We decided we preferred the texture on this side. So we're going down this way. We are trying to get cell phone signal. Because if we can get a message out to a friend, we may be able to get picked up sooner. And then we would just hike out today. But we will see. Otherwise, it'll be great to spend another night out here. Wave goodbye to the Talus. Bye, Talus. Goodbye, Talus. We'll see you next time. All right, guys, we got Matterhorn Peak behind us. We're here at our last pass of the Sierra High Rat, Horse Creek Pass. Woo! That's it. It's all downhill. Echo, echo, echo. Jimmy, how do you feel about getting out of here tonight? Heck yeah, let's do it. Get out in day 12. <laughs> Two things. One, the talus is not over. We wave goodbye to it, but it's back. And two, Carl has come up with a team name. The Talus Cowboys. Alright, I think that's the last of the talus. What do you think, Carl? Goodbye, talus. That's the last of the talus, I think. Okay, it's me again. We're back on talus. We had a really nice dinner on the rocks and had a great view. And now for dessert, we've got more talus. You can just never say goodbye to talus because it's always there. It's always around the corner, always ready to spring up on you. We had dinner, so now we're just on an evening stroll. Just an evening stroll down to the trailhead. Yep. Final stroll. So it is 8:27. We are descending in the dark. When I turn on this flashlight, Carl thought I was going to illuminate You're the path. Us and not the trail. But I am not illuminating the trail. We are doing it blind. We might die, but we are close enough to people that if we die, they can at least recover our bodies. But we still finished the tra the trek. All right. So this is how the adventure concludes. Um, we see lights. And we smell fire, and we don't know where the heck we are. Oh my goodness. I'm having breakfast. It's a breakfast burrito. And breakfast is a great time for beer. Cheers. So leisurely. You see this guys? This is called a momentary respite. We dropped from 3.5 miles an hour to 3.2. <laughs> this is the worst filming on record because I'm struggling to keep up. Thank goodness there's a lake here. Otherwise they never would have stopped. Oh, look at this view. This is why I suffer.
We're in an elevator, Carl. <laughs> Why don't we have some of these outside? <laughs> some oh. of those rocks took me down. <laughs> Wow, look at all the cars at Onion Valley Trailhead. What's happening? Hey guys, it is day 16 of the adventure and we are hiking out from the Onion Valley Trailhead right now. We're going up over Kearsarge Pass and uh, these are going to be our 20-ish logistics miles back to the car at Road's End. Uh, but if you're an optimist, this is a section hike of the Ray Lakes Loop. We're not quite at the level of like Senior Mirror's Taco Hut, but we're basically like pizza and beer walking up a hill right now. I don't know, if somebody really looked sad and needed to pick me up, I'd probably give them my pizza and beer. I don't need it. I feel great just being out here. Lovely day. Had a, a rest day yesterday, as they call it, even though I think that worked me pretty good. Yeah, it was not a zero day, it was an active recovery day. Active recovery. Um, first it was active, then it was recovery. <laughs> An hour 35 minutes in, we just hit our last pass of this trip, number 35, Kearsarge Pass. Woo. This is an amazing view of East Bidette. Oh, what happened here? Yeah, so uh, just broke that because I was trying to dodge the mud. Silly. Let's see if it worked. A beer can inside a pot inside a bear can. A bag of chips. Oh, I'm looking forward to these chips right now. Really good ass pizza and a second beer for Carl. Cheers. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but we stopped for lunch where we had beer and pizza. And next thing I know, my trekking pole, which was broken, is taped back together. And I'm walking with a bag of chips around my neck. A great hike down. This is a really neat forest. There's some huge trees in here. Oh man, Kings Canyon, you are beautiful. It is pretty hot. I've been dousing myself in whoa! I've been dousing myself in water. Yeah, it's about to get dusty and poopy. Steve Roper said the final indignity of the Sierra High Route was getting down to Mono Village and the Twin Lakes Trailhead. I think for this adventure, the indignity here is following behind this mule train and getting stuck behind them. Turns out they're not feeding their mules enough. They're not feeding them pizza and beer because they're not fast enough. Woo! We did it. We're done. That was the final indignity right there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, water comes out of a rock? Dude. All right, 15 days later, we are here at the car again. Nice. Now the adventure is officially over. We're gonna drive and eat and do all that fun stuff. See you on the next one.